Um, when Dan set LEA up, you know, we, we came out of a university environment and what it, one, of, one of the key things he wanted to do was he wanted to do research. And um, so we've been doing research on John Shuck's Lean Transformation Framework. And we've been doing that since 2013, before that was, before that was actually published and, uh, and, and made live. So uh, we thought it would be a good thing um, to share some of the some of the research that we've been doing and then some of the conclusions. So Pete's going to do that for us. Well, I thought, actually, I was listening to Mike yesterday, so I thought I'd live the dream with Mike and use Copilot straight away. So I went back and did and said, what's the purpose of uh, the Lean Enterprise Academy? So it came up with, let me read this out, it was... Uh, LEA is a non-for-profit organization established to help customers become self-reliant on their lean journey through research, products and services. We provide better, faster, cheaper ways to learn and improve. It was actually spot on. So, and it put a lot more stuff behind that as well. Far better than we could write, Dave. Yeah. So, yeah, good job. Right? Yeah, I'll use that a bit more, I think. So, the good news is... I'm really excited because we're nearly there with a 60 million grant from the government on this research question that we've been given, yeah? Pretty excited, yeah? So what is this research question that uh, we're sort of uh, talking about? Well, let's see. What else do you get money from the government for, yeah? Can pigeons play ping pong? Doesn't get any better than that, yeah? We're bound to get sponsored, yeah? It's gonna be really good. Okay, maybe it wasn't really our research question, this, yeah? So this guy called Skinner, has anybody heard of him? Yes, yeah, so a while back, this, yeah? He started, he's a behavioral scientist, and he started this uh, project uh, just at the end of the World War II. Uh, it was called Project Pigeon. And basically, it's teaching pigeons to play ping pong. So I couldn't think of a better research area to focus on, yeah? So, let's see how he got on. Let's get it working. The two uh, pigeons are at either end of a small ping pong table. One pigeon uh, pecks the ball as it comes toward him and knocks it toward the other pigeon. The other pigeon pecks the ball back across the table. If it goes past one pigeon, the other pigeon can eat. And if it goes the other way, the other pigeon eats. So that there is a real, it's a real game. The uh, pigeon... Uh, is reinforced for a cross-court shot if that is what gets the ball past his opponent. Okay, so Mike, that wasn't AI generated. Yeah? So, you know, <laughs> allegedly. Uh, okay, so uh, pretty impressive. He taught pigeons to play ping pong. So isn't it dead easy? We're just teaching people to apply lean thinking and practice. Should be able to do it really easily, yeah? You can teach pigeons to play ping pong. Wow. Okay, well, actually, this uh, experiment was part of a secret war effort uh, to uh, teach pigeons to go to ships, peck on ships, with an a, uh, aiming uh, target for missiles on the back, yeah, so they could uh, blow up uh, enemy ships. Luckily for the pigeons, yeah, they were working on radar at the same time, yeah, which came into play, so they scrapped uh, this project. Yeah, so the poor pigeons were okay in the end. Yeah. But uh, uh, this guy called Skinner, it's really exciting. I've never read up on this before. Uh, didn't learn it at uh, university. But uh, basically, he called this uh, process of learning, he was studying learning processes, and uh, he called this shaping. And what is shaping? Well, shaping is when you ad adapt an animal to do something to its current performance level. So you see how it's performing, and then you alter its behavior very carefully, one step at a time. So Skinner took this concept, and you can see it worked. Yeah? And he started to apply it to uh, studying maths class in schools. OK, so uh, clearly some of the students uh, had no idea how to solve maths problems. That was me. Yeah, I was a bit bad at maths at school. Yeah, wasn't really great at it. Yeah, while other students, probably like Dave, yeah, whipped through it yeah, and did their calculations just like this. So he kind of studied this. Uh, within shaping, yeah, what he called shaping, this response, yeah, he, you give feedback immediately to someone to adjust their behavior at one step at a time. Uh, does that sound familiar? So someone mentioned John was talking about TWI before. It's a very similar process to that, where we're 
adjusting a little action and giving people's feedback. Okay, so uh, what he found though is that in the maths class that children did not uh, sort of find out uh, about, uh, they'd work on one problem, okay, and then they wouldn't get the feedback maybe until after doing three, th three uh, problems, or it might be the end of the day. So they weren't getting the feedback quick enough. So what he worked out basically is this careful sequencing of giving feedback to children, one step at a time. And by doing this, uh, he improved their results. I think it was something like 70 to 90%. So they were given a complicated problem and by the end of the school session, they could solve those problems straight up. So this is really interesting sort of uh, research that he did that. So by the end of the lesson, they were doing something completely new that they'd never done before. Very quickly. It didn't take them weeks. It was virtually within a day. You could teach them to do anything. So as the pigeons can uh, peck and do play ping pong, we can teach people. So what does all this mean to lean and what we're trying to actually do? Yeah? Enough of the pigeons and ping pong. So uh, basically what we're saying here, you know, one of the big questions... Uh, that we've got in lean is how can we get others to do this? I think you just mentioned it in the logic. How do we get people to do this? Yeah. Well, uh, John Shook addressed this question way back in 2013 at uh, a lean summit. And he basically said that the challenge is uh, not getting other people to do it. The challenge is getting you to do it or us as the leaders to do it. Okay. So uh, why is this sort of uh, challenge coming up? What did he actually mean by this? Well, he came up with this saying, oh, so have you heard this saying from John Shulk? This act your way to a new way of thinking. Has anybody heard that before? So he came up with that, yeah. So what does that mean that we've got to do as uh, leaders? What does that mean? With our people, what are we going to do? Some activity, lead them, yeah. We've got to actually do something, spend time doing with people, yeah, to actually do that. So we've been doing this LTF uh, research, using the LTF, and I'll talk about that in a minute. What do you think on time, with what, on average, what we found is that leaders spend 5% of their time teaching and coaching others. What was on the Toyota slide yesterday? What did, uh, what did they put? Don't give the answer, guys. What did they put on that leaders were doing? Maybe at a manager level. That was 80, that was the senior guy. Yeah, well, the sort of normal manager level, what was it? 60, yeah, 60%, 60%. On average, when we uh, ask people, and this is not us, this is people telling us, this is how much time they're spending. 5% if we're lucky, teaching and coaching. That's a big difference, isn't it? From these guys to the rest of the world. So think about that. So 60%, is what the target is. Are we going to change people overnight to that percentage when they're currently doing 5% today? That's difficult, isn't it, yeah? And what are leaders uh, busy doing? Yeah, I think, uh, I think you mentioned some of it already, yeah? Well, we're doing fixing problems for people that they can fix themselves. A lot of leaders are actually doing the process work, actually doing the work. Wow, so you're getting paid to be a leader? but you're not doing any leadership activities, you're actually doing process work. So how can we get leaders to address that? What is the process we can use to help them change their activities and time to do that? So that's what we're trying to work on at LEA, is to help leaders do that and change their sort of practice. So what we've been uh, working on is... Uh, some learning processes to enable leaders to do that effectively. And that's what we've been researching. So when we say research, it's practical research. We don't do academic kind of research. We do practical research based on going out there, working with companies and developing these processes. As the logic said, we want people to be self-reliant on this. Yeah? We want them to have systems and processes that they can use internally to be self-reliant. And that's our end practice to do that. So we start this process off with the Lean Transformation Framework. So has anybody been using the uh, Lean Transformation Framework yet? We had a few examples. Yeah, great. Okay, good. Uh, so we use this uh, process to understand what the gaps are in your organization and prioritize where to work on. 
Okay, and uh, hopefully by using that, organisations can apply lean thinking and practice themselves, um, what they need to fix on. These guys are working that out and figuring out, so we just heard what they're going to work on next, that's great. And uh, what we're trying to do is provide a place where you can go to, we call that our online learning platform, to uh, look at the learning processes you need, whether that's problem solving with Logic, they, uh, they were working on that. We want to supply you with the learning process to follow as a leader. So this is very different. We're not supplying online courses or anything like that. What we're trying to provide you is a learning process for you as a leader to follow, to teach and coach others. So that's hence the platforms there with the leader in the middle. It's all about getting the leaders to teach and coach others. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I wasn't trained to be a teacher and coach, uh, especially in lean subjects. I remember, I think the first time I did this uh, as a leader, I was 19 as a team leader. I think I brought a book, I locked my teen in a room and forced them to read pages out of the book. Probably wasn't the best learning process uh, to do then. Probably thought I was a complete idiot, but <laughs> hey-ho. So, you know, what is a good learning process? What do you actually mean by that? Yeah. So, but first of all, what learning process do we actually need uh, for an organization? So, we've been using LTF uh, to uh, do this. We've uh, run over 50 what we call LTF uh, workshops. So, basically, this is more with senior level teams, and uh, we've run these sessions. And if you don't know what the LTF is, it starts off with what's our value-driven purpose, what we're trying to achieve, whether that's an organization or whether that's a process level. I'm doing the work. What's the value of that process we're trying to drive? And what are the problems we're trying to solve to achieve that purpose? So Lean starts off with not rolling out a program. It starts off with what's the problems we're trying to solve and building the whole approach around that. So once we understand what problems we need to solve, then we need to say, well, around those problems, how do we do the work today? And what do we need to improve in that work to solve the problem? Well, to improve the work and do the work, we've got to have capable people. So the capable people, yeah, how are we going to actually develop those capable people to do and improve the work to solve the problem? Well, who does that? Well, that's the bit in the middle, the management system. So we need to have a good management system that supports people to do performance, our daily work, yeah, but also improvement. So two types of management system to do that. So from that management system, though, to get leaders, what else have we got to have? You mentioned it, great for one of the first companies I've talked about, behavior KPIs, that's great. Brilliant. So behaviors are in there, aren't they? Yeah, leaders got to behave a certain way to support people. So behave. So what is the mindset yeah, that we've got as an organization today? And what do we need that to be uh, to get to where we want to be? So that's the fifth question. So using this thinking and applying those questions to Lean, we've run these workshops, we've got a process, and uh, we've done over 50 now. So what have we learned from that? So now we can't go into all of that today because it's so detailed, yeah? And we are going to publish some of this. So I thought I'd give you a really top-level sort of uh, view of this. So in this uh, eye chart uh, that uh, got up there now, uh, this eye chart here, is the five questions and the different levels of leadership, okay? And we've been focusing more with senior management, that's why it's in red, yeah, uh, at the moment with LTF. And as you can see, the red means a starting at this, thinking about it, you know, and we've attempted something, and green would be excelling really good, maybe the Toyota's level, yeah, something like that. There's not a lot of green on there. Now, some of the companies that are coming to us have usually got problems or they're just starting. So we're not, you know, we don't work with that many companies uh, like Toyota because they're already on there. Yeah, we don't need to support them. Yeah. So by looking at this, what have we actually learned? Well, you know, there's issues here where uh, we, people do have a strategy, they do have a value-driven purpose, but they tend to uh, not be able to execute it on the shop floor or link it. That's one big area. Uh, flow on question two, we're not great at flow, especially end-to-end -end flow. We can do flow with our team members maybe in an area, but when we start looking at supply chain, it's great seeing the value stream stuff with these guys, looking at flow end-to-end. -end. We're kind of pretty bad at that. But the worst question by far was number three, which is developing the capabilities we need, which is pretty shocking, really, because I thought that would be the best area. We're all got training and things like that, but actually it was the worst. 
And what we tend to have gone to now, and this is not us saying this, this is you guys, this is the leaders, we have these once a year discussions, we've outsourced people development to HR, and we have a one year discussion, and it's all run on a system. And there's very little ownership now from the leaders of developing their own people. Now, of course, that never happens here. Never happens in this room. Yeah. But that's what we found. That's what the leaders were saying to us. Yeah. So that's not going to get us. And that's why question three was the worst by a mile. Okay. So what can we do about that? I'm just going to dig a little bit deeper about what are the things that are in that. Well, these are the things that leaders were saying uh, about the gaps were. And we're looking at this at an organization level and for an individual. Okay. So some of the things we found here was... Improvement capabilities, not defined what, uh, not talking about process capabilities or technical capabilities you need to operate your process, I'm not talking about that. They are usually pretty well defined somewhere or another. We're talking about improvement capabilities now. Okay, so improvement capabilities weren't even defined for the levels in the organization from senior management to team members. Uh, skill progression wasn't defined. We tend to send people on courses, one-off courses, and now you're an expert. Come back and do it. Or we'll go on an online course. Ooh, yeah? We're not viewing skill as a journey from basic knowledge to being capable and coach through that to be able to teach and coach others, just like we were saying before. Next one, then, is uh, lack of leaders' uh, uh, sort of uh, development plan. There's no ownership. We're not looking at it. We're not reviewing it. It's not there on our performance boards saying, are we winning or losing with our development activities for people? That's just as important, isn't it? If we haven't got capable people, and this people picture is moving all the time. People are leaving and going. Our capabilities are changing. So leaders have got to own this, and they've got to have a plan saying, hey, I've not trained Sally in problem solving. Okay, she's next on the list. I've got a problem. I'm going to use this as an opportunity to teach and coach her to do that. Okay, so... We've got to take ownership. HR can't do that for you. A system can't do that for you. You've got to think about that and live it every day. So if it's not on our obeyer and our performance boards, yeah, then we can't do that. We can't ask the question whether we're winning or losing with our development activities. Okay, so that was one big area as well. Next one then was what we just talked about was time spent developing people. What did Skinner say? We've got to give immediate feedback. We've got to learn by doing and give feedback to people as they're doing it. That's how people learn. That's how I learned riding a bike. My dad showed me. I fell off a few times. He showed me how to get back on it again, and get up there, gave me the instant feedback. Leaders need to spend the time teaching, coaching, doing that. And if they're only spending 5% of the time, then they're probably not doing that, are they? If it's only 5% of the time teaching and coaching. Last kind of bit there is and then no learning processes for leaders to follow, to teach and coach people. We're making it hard. People having to make it up and reinvent the wheel or we're giving them really bad methods, PowerPoint, to train people. That's not the way to do it. That's not learning by doing. So we need to give leaders good learning processes to be able to teach and coach well. Otherwise, you'll end up like me, locking people in a room with a book. It's probably not the best approach, you yeah? So leaders are not born natural teachers and coaches. We need to help them be able to teach and coach and understand what a good learning process is. Okay, so last bit there then is uh, little or no criteria to confirm capability. Your version of what capable is might be completely different from my version because we've all got different experiences. So how are we judging someone is capable on that process or to make improvement? Yeah, we need to have some criteria to judge people on to do that, and it needs to be consistent. And then the last bit then is future capabilities. So Mike mentioned yesterday, great, AI, who's thinking about that? Who are we developing now to have those capabilities to think about how we can use them? So a lot of the time, we're not focusing on the future capabilities, especially if you're redesigning flow, and we might need new capabilities in that flow to make it work. So we need to be thinking about those things all the time. So that's what we found, that's what leaders were saying their main gaps were, based on a good understanding of the LTF and those questions. Yeah. So that's okay, great, now we've got more problems to solve. Good, at least we know what problems it is to solve. So what can we do about that? What are we working on in LAA? So you saw some great examples where we asked Hologic to uh, talk first. And uh, now I don't have to, I can talk less because you've already talked about them. Skill levels. 
So improvement capabilities, we need to define them. And you need to define them based on what you're working on now and the problems you're trying to solve now. So if we're trying to put performance system in, just like we saw with the logic, great, now we need to give people problem solving capabilities, yeah? Otherwise the leaders are always gonna be doing it. So we need to define who gets what and what problem solving do we need. We also need to uh, think about prob uh, skill development as a journey through these stages, as we saw then with the logic. You know, we're not just sending people on a one-off course and now they're an expert, go away and do it. That doesn't work like that. We need to have proven capability. So we're coming up with this four skill levels and we're having learning processes to support that. Next one then is this plan for every person. Uh, the guys who attended my session on Monday, who was in the management system one, anybody? You're all run away, yeah? So what did we have, a skills matrix, yeah? And most of you probably got a skills matrix, but what was on that? There was timing, there was a plan, when are we gonna, who's, and there was a priority. And it's something we could display on our performance board and ask questions about, yeah? So skills matrix, not enough. It needs to be a development plan with who am I gonna work on next and when am I gonna do it? And hold myself accountable for that. Okay, so that was one area. The next then is leaders as teaching coaches. We need a reflection process yeah, for leaders to be able to reflect about how are they spending their time. If I'm going to train people now on problem solving, how much time this week am I going to try to dedicate to do that? What is my process to reflect on my activities as a leader to now maybe even spend an hour a week more on doing that? I need some self-reflection process to say and prioritize my time because you are the most busiest people in the room. You're the senior leaders. You're driving this. If you're not making the time, yeah, and you need a process, you need a standard to follow. Okay, you're asking people to work to stand. We talked about standardized work before. Well, where's our standardized work as leaders? What time are we spending on here? And that's the biggest battle we've all got as leaders, isn't it? How you allocate your time and what you spend it on. Last area then is on this learning processes. We want to make it easier for leaders to be able to teach and coach. So what is a good learning process? What does that look like? You know, make it easier for leaders to teach and coach. And that's what we're trying to do. So on our learning platform, we're trying to put that all together so you can go there, look at a learning process and carry it out and use it. Make it easier to follow. Okay, so what are we doing to do that? I'm going to give you an example yeah, of RPS. So uh, we're just going to go into a little bit more detail of what is a learning process and, and how we're putting that on our platform. If you go downstairs in the Lean Lab, you can show it. You can look at our platform. Uh, the platform is just a repository. Learning is best done on the job where you can do that. Yeah? There is some online learning on basic knowledge if you want to do that online. And now there's remote teams, people work remotely. So that's why we're trying to do it both on the platform and uh, through leaders. So what we've got is a skills process. Now, so we've got this skill development that we're gonna go through. So what does that look like for RPS? So skill level one for RPS, it's just some basic knowledge. It takes around about an hour. You can either do it online or you can do it face-to-face. -face. The leader can do it face-to-face -face with our material. So what do you need to do that? Well, we have a teach poster uh, that we got here. You can, yeah, that's so it's visual, okay? When people look at these first, they go, oh no, well, this looks really busy. Well, actually, most people are teaching at the moment through 200 PowerPoint slides, yeah? So let's try to make it a bit more simple. And actually, once you've been through this once, it, it's pretty easy. So it's just some key images, okay, as a poster, the key points you need to learn about. Behind it, then, there is a, a guide. So we have a facilitation guide, which is done in TWI style. So what are the key points uh, that you need to know about? Okay, important steps, key points, and reasons why. That is important to know about. So the leader can go through that. What are the key points? More importantly though, you can make it live as a leader. You bring in your experiences around that key point in your organization. So just having the teach poster and the key points isn't enough. You need to bring your experiences around that subject as your leader and make it relevant to your people. Yeah. So that's the top of the poster. This is skill level one. Okay, so you can either use the teach poster, use the facilitation guide, or you can go online and do it. Yeah? So we, we have that online as well. And instead of the teach posters, little videos that go through the same thing. Yeah? So if you've got remote people or whatever, but you still need to do a debrief as a leader with the person that's gone through it online. 
Okay, you still need to touch them and talk about it. So that's skill level one. So what's skill level two? Well, this is now the bottom of the uh, teach poster. So this is the uh, method that we've got, the bottom of the teach poster. And if I click on more, okay, so the bottom describes the method. So we need to practice the method in a safe way first. So how do we do that? We do that with a case study. So we develop a case study and we try the method out. And we've got a lot of supported material for this. Okay, and the steps in the process to go through. There's a method, we go through the case study, and we work through that in a safe environment. Okay, so that's skill two. And the outcome of that is you've got a case study and you've completed, you've done something, you've used the method. So the next one then is skill level three. So this is where we need to become capable of that method and we need to work on real problems. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, you need a leader that is capable in the first place to teach and coach the next level down. And as you heard with the logic, they've got to that stage now, we've got some capable people, and now they're teaching and coaching others. But we need a process to do that. So the course now that we've got on our platform, it's not a course for training, it's a course that tells the leader what are the steps to go through to teach and coach someone else. So it's not an online platform where you send people on a course, it's for the leader to use to follow to teach and coach someone else and all the material you need to do that. Okay, so, and the sequence and the steps and the timing for that as well. So there's a lot of uh, material. Remember we said that uh, also we need to evaluate people, what's the criteria? So we've got an evaluation method as well. So we've got a common way to evaluate people on their capability that leaders can use. Uh, for this. If you look at our YouTube website, you can see Luke's report out, and he went through the pain of this process, Luke, all right, yeah. Did a good job. I think he got the grade. Did he get his recognition? Yeah, yeah he did. Okay, great. Okay, so Luke went through that process, and uh, hopefully now that's the output from level three. We've proven his capability, solved problems. Sometimes some people might need to do that two or three times, because some people learn slower than others. Yeah, that's okay, though, but as long as they prove that and it's capable. Next one then is uh, skill level four, teaching and coaching others. So there's a process for doing that. That's captured online. That focuses more about your coaching ability and behaviors now. Okay, how to be a better teacher and coach of this. Okay, so there's steps for that as well. There's a teaching agenda. How do you teach well? How do you coach others on that? And there's a sequence and there's a timing for that that we've worked on. If you do this too quick, people will not learn. If you take too long, it doesn't work. So there's time and there's a sequence. Yeah. Leaders don't know that when you ask them to go and teach and coach people. They might have done it for the, you know, never done this before for the first time, then they're making it all up off their own back. Why do that when there's a successful process to teach and coach it? Use this, try it out. Okay, so that's our kind of learning platform. And those are the four skill levels. That's an example. We're trying to do that with 40 different topics at four different skill levels. So it's a bit of a big monster. We wish the government had given us 60 million to uh, sponsor us to do it, yeah, but it's not, yeah. So our learning platform is all about capturing these learning processes. So you can use them, you can try them out. We want a PDCA and improve them. We don't do this in isolation. We partner with companies. There's a lot of companies today that we partner with here to develop these processes. Yeah, we're not just making it up in isolation. We're trying them out. Uh, so. Basically, uh, we want uh, quality learning processes that leaders can use all in one place so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. We want them to be pull-based, so we want you to use LTF to say which learning processes do you need to focus on first, not try to do everything. Okay, so use that. Then we want you to have a plan. We've got a plan, like I said, to put 40 different topics on there at four different skill levels, so that's a lot of work for us. We're busy. And then we want to make it easier and cheaper. Most small businesses cannot afford, they can't afford lean consultants to come in and do this. You know, it's expensive. Yeah, so we want people to be able to do this yourself. So we're making it really cheap. It's only £100 a year for people to access all this information. Have we got all the learning processes on there? No, we haven't. You know, we've got a few uh, different levels in that. You know, we're growing it as, much, as fast as we can. But we need some help from you guys, basically, to do that, yeah? First of all, we want you to try the learning processes out that are on there. Use the rapid problem solving one, that's a great one. That's, most people come to us for problem solving uh, training and we're starting to do that. Give us some feedback and improvements, we can always improve it. And uh, 
partner with us yeah, on a learning topic. If you've got a specific learning topic that you want to do or use around a lean subject, and we're happy to partner and capture that learning process. And we win because we can put it on the platform as well. And also, if you're really flush like the English government, yeah, you could even sponsor us to write a module and we'll do it. We'll do it for you, for your specific needs, yeah? Because it's going to help everybody. It's going to help the whole community if we can do that, yeah? And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest lean content.